from dryers and sunglasses to household appliances and milking machines. The United States has published a new list of goods prohibited for export to Russia. The latest package of U.S. sanctions includes 69 Russian companies, among them aircraft repair plants, enterprises for the production of spare parts, gunpowder, tractors and cars and also shipyards and engineering centers. Canada, the UK and Australia announced new anti-Russian sanctions along with the United States. The most serious restrictions affected Rosatom and related structures, as well as personally the head of the company, Alexei Lihachev. The pressure on Rosatom is increasing, and this is very good. This means that in the end the leaders will come to limit the work of Rosatom more at least in the direction so that it cannot carry out its investments, its investment projects and accordingly reduce its influence. This also applies to those technologies that come to Russia. This is also a very good, good direction, which leads to the fact that Russia is more and more technologically lagging behind the whole world. In addition to the head of Rosatom, there are 45 new names on the blacklists of the USA, UK, Canada and Australia. Among them are citizens of not only Russia, but also Belarus. Under personal sanctions, now the Human Rights Commissioner in the Federation, Tatiana Moskalkova, the Deputy Minister of Education of Russia, Denis Gribov, the owner of the Russian copper company and a member of the Board of Directors of Transneft, Igor Altushkin, the former Deputy Mayor of Moscow, Valery Shantsev, the first deputy chairman of the government, Andrei Belousov, Sergei Stepashin, member of the board of directors of the joint stock company, Russian Railways, as well as the top management of Sovcom Flot and Gazprom Neft. And now the sanctions that we see are a continuation of this policy, let's say, not as fast as we would like, but still squeezing the Russian economy. You know, when they ask the main effect of the sanctions on the part of those who say that the surplus economy of the Russian Federation is now again in deficit, and this deficit will be aggravated simply, because these sanctions are growing. New restrictions were introduced as part of the agreements of the G7 countries to tighten sanctions against Russia. The corresponding declaration was signed by the leaders of the G7 countries at the summit in Japan. The document, among other things, speaks of intentions to limit the production, processing and export of diamonds from Russia in order to reduce Moscow's export earnings. It is very important that the pressure that our Western partners will carry out will have a significant effect so that these countries will contribute to not circumventing the sanctions that have already been introduced using various methods, including warnings regarding a trade embargo against those companies or to those countries that contribute to the circumvention of sanctions. That is, this as a potential where it is possible, respectively, to reduce Russia's income. The G7 declaration is a guideline for national governments regarding the sanctions policy against Russia. At the same time, experts are confident that the EU countries will join the initiative. The 11th package of restrictions is on the way. They are now behaving in the role of the so-called locomotive of the sanctions of the countries that they impose. And as British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak noted, they want to serve as a kind of example for their G7 partners, since after all other countries should also join in the first place. This is a hint for the European Union that it is desirable that they also introduce similar sanctions. According to analysts, the collapse of the Russian economy and financial system is inevitable due to complex sanctions. Russian industry records an extreme decline in profits, depending on the industry, from 30 to 75 percent. In Gazprom, this figure is 72 percent. The budget deficit of Russia has already exceeded the plan for the whole of 2023 and amounted to 3.4 tenths of a ruble. And this means that already this year there will be nothing to pay pensions and salaries. But the only way to increase pressure on the Kremlin is to maintain the current dynamics of the sanctions policy. Reported by Roman Smoller, Vasil Panasyuk, UA TV News.